Welcome to Metalactone. Today we are going to discuss anti-cancer drug, specifically gemcitabine. In the previous lecture, we discussed uh, actually uh, there are a lot of different ways through which you can treat the cancer, like uh, through the folate antagonist, purine antagonist, pyrimidine antagonist. So, actually, in this lecture, we will discuss pyrimidine antagonist, specifically gemcitabine. So, if you see here, like most important five drugs. Uh, that are actually fall in the pyrimidine antagonist. These are basically the azacitidine, capecitabine, cytarabine, 5-fluorouracil and the gemcitabine. And this is actually the our main focus in this lecture, gemcitabine. Okay. So before we start, uh, we will revise again the cell cycle. You will see the four most important phases in the cell cycle like the G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase and M phase that is the mitotic phase in which you will see the division of the cell. So the most important is the S phase because in the S phase you will see the synthesis of the DNA and DNA synthesis is very much important in the cell division. If there is no synthesis of the DNA then it means that there is no division of the cell. So, basically the most important nucleotides that are actually fall in the DNA is the adenine that will be in front of the thymine and the guanine that will be in front of the cytosine. Okay. Adenine and guanine are basically the purine. I am saying these are basically the purine. But the thymine and the cytosine are basically the this one are basically the pyrimidine. Uracil also fall in the uracil also fall in the pyrimidine but they are actually present in the uh, RNA. Okay. Now if you see like first structure if you see this is the cytidine. I am saying cytidine. 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 Okay. So lot of students get confused between the cytidine and cytosine. So two most important things like this is the cytidine and there is another thing which is the there is another words that is the cytosine. Okay. So what's actually the difference between the cytidine and cytosine? Cytosine is actually the base, nitrogenous base and that is the simple base that's why it is called the cytosine. When this nitrogenous base will attach to the ribose structure, then it will become the cytidine. So now this nitrogenous structure, this one, this is the structure of the nitrogenous base. This is actually the cytosine. When it will attach to the ribose structure, then it will become the cytidine. Okay. This is the one thing. If you focus at the Carbon number 2 and 3, you will see the presence of the hydroxyl group. Okay. When I remove the hydroxyl group at the carbon number 2, then it will become deoxycytidine. So, it will become deoxycytidine. Now, the hydroxyl group has been removed from the carbon number 2. Okay, when I, if I add two fluorine atom at the carbon number two, then it will become 2,2-difluorodeoxycytidine. So, this is most important. Actually, there are two fluorine atom attached to the carbon number two. So, that's why I call 2,2-difluoro. And the remain, remaining will be the same. And the overall structure will remain the same. And that's why it will call the deoxycytidine. Okay. Now, this is the final structure. Okay. Gemcitabine is actually the analogous of the deoxycytidine. Okay. And like this is the structure of the gemcitabine and that is analogous to the deoxycytidine but there is a little bit difference okay now if we move towards the mechanism first of all 
uh, when there is a person and that person take uh, dimcitabine. So that will enter into uh, first of all from the blood it will enter into the cell through the transporter nucleotide transporter. Okay, uh, dimcitabine or you can say difluorodeoxycytidine. This is the difluorodeoxycytidine. Now this drug has been entered into the cell. In the cell, you will see it has two pathways. Okay. First of all, it will move or convert into the difluorodeoxycytidine monophosphate. So difluorodeoxycytidine monophosphate and that this conversion will occur in the presence of the enzyme and that enzyme will be the deoxycytidine kinase so deoxycytidine kinase okay this enzyme will convert uh, this compound into the this compound monophosphate it will just add the one phosphate group okay after that you will see it, it will convert into difluorodeoxycytidine diphosphate. Now an other phosphate group has been added. And that again, this phosphate group again add with the help of the enzyme and that enzyme will be the nucleotide monophosphate kinase. So if you see like the nucleotide, nucleotide monophosphate kinase. This enzyme just add the addition of an other phosphate group. This compound is very much important. So diphosphate is very much important. So actually this compound block the ribonucleotide reductase. So there is an enzyme actually if you see uh, before we discuss its proper function, we first of all, uh, we should know that the nucleotide convert into the deoxyribonucleotide. Okay. This is the thing. Actually, deoxyribonucleotides are actually involved in the formations of the RNA. But the deoxyribonucleotide, all the nucleotide deoxy will actually involve in the synthesis of the DNA like the adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. Okay. And uh, the conversion of the ribonucleotide to deoxyribonucleotide happens with the help of the enzyme and that is the ribonucleotide reductase. So that enzyme is actually the ribonucleotide reductase. Okay. That enzyme actually involved in the conversion of this uh, process like the ribonucleotide into the deoxyribonucleotide. Okay. This compound that is actually formed here, difluorodeoxycytidine diphosphate, block this enzyme. So, if this enzyme block, then what will happen? Then the conversion of the ribonucleotide into the deoxyribonucleotide will block. Then what will happen? Then deoxyribonucleotide will not be available for the synthesis of the DNA and if there is no synthesis of the DNA then it's mean that there is no division of the cell. So it's mean we can control the growth of the cell that is actually the main problem in the cancer. Okay. Next if you see this compound again can convert into triphosphate difluoro deoxycytidine triphosphate now another phosphate has been added again with the help of the enzyme that is the nucleotide diphosphate kinase so this happens with the help of the nucleotide diphosphate kinase okay now this compound actually inhibit the synthesis of the dna dna synthesis inhabit by this compound so actually uh, up till now we discussed two things first is the diphosphate has other pathway 
for the blockage of the or stoppage of the DNA synthesis and the triphosphate has its own pathway. Okay. If you see like this compound can convert into the difluorodeoxyuridine and it is again this will convert with the help of the cytidine uh, deaminase that is an enzyme that is involved in this conversion and that's the, that compound ultimately goes into the blood and excrete from the body because actually we know that the blood goes to the kidney and from the kidney you will see the filtration of different drugs and drugs ultimately excrete uh, uh, from the body so this is the mechanism of the gym setup okay we talk about the therapeutic uses so most importantly they are used in the different specific like the pancreatic cancers so you see like the pancreatic cancers urinary bladder cancers of the and this small cell lung cancer this is very much important small cell lung cancer is very much important Actually, it is rapidly growing as compared to the non-small cell lung cancer. But the main cause of the small cell lung cancer is the smoking. This is the main factor that causes small cell and it is rapidly growing. So that gemcitabine is actually used for this case. And it can also use in the non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And you see that it's a very complicated topic which we discuss in the different lectures about the non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Okay. If we talk about the adverse effects, in the, all the uh, anti-metabolites or you can say pyrimidine antagonist, furine antagonist and folate antagonist in all cases you will see the most important that is common in all of them will be the myelosuppression. Myelosuppression is very much important in all these cases. Okay. Most importantly you will see the suppressions of the platelet thrombo cytopenia in this case if you if you use the gymcitabine you will see the thrombocytopenia so can we check it uh, how we will check the uh, thrombocytes in our blood are normal or decrease so you can check it by cbc in the cbc report you will see the different rbc's report platelets and wbc's and lot of other things so in the CBC report, you can check the whether the platelets in the body of the person are normal or not. So other uh, adverse effects you will see the alopecia, loss of hair. That are, uh, that is an other adverse effect, and you see the uh, flu-like uh, symptoms. You can also see in this case, and you will see the rash on the body and. After using these drugs, you can also see the vomiting and the nausea in that situation. So this is all about the gym setup. If you have any question, you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.